pressure. Do you understand? So, Mohammed. You have the biggest setup. How are you? You are excited. How's it going? Same as always. I want to. I want to take on Shamsi. I want to talk to. We're not going to go to hell if we say Merry Christmas. Don't worry. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just being polite. So, how how is Did you did you give your mum a package to you as a Christmas present? Did you give it away or did you are you are you reading it? Did you give it to your mum? is the 31st of January and if you're following a secular calendar today is New Year's Eve. If you're following a Christian calendar our New Year started at the beginning of Advent on the first Sunday and as we come towards the end of this year I just want to take a moment to try and reflect about uh, what Soko Films has done up to now and, and what we might hope to do in the future. Um, JC and myself came together by accident in terms of working together to, to start putting together uh, Sokol Films as it is. Um, JC saw me and decided that he wanted to start recording me because he thought it was some good content. Um, and I'm quite happy to work with JC because I know he's a man, a good character, a Christian, uh, who wants to serve the Kingdom of God with the tools that he has at his disposal, just like we all should. And I think in terms of what we've tried to achieve, we've tried to uh, present the Christian faith as a way of life, uh, and that's something that we intend to try and do more in the future. We've also tried to expose some of the double standards that have been practiced here by the Islamic Dawah team. For instance, demanding a criterion of evidence from Christians that they cannot provide to their own faith and to their own religion as well as showing actually that the Christian faith when properly understood does stand up to uh, polemic and uh, apologetic and that there are serious and fundamental problems within the, um, the Islamic tradition that an honest intellectual and objective analysis uh, would lead someone to question the, the fundamental beliefs. And what we're hoping to do in 2018 is to continue the work that we've started to do and to develop that and to broaden it. Uh, but also we want to um, start challenging issues within the church like a media service, uh, doing reports on news stories connected to the body of Christ in the UK, um, as well as um, tackle uh, issues connected to Islamization and the church in, in general society as well. So we're going to be looking for stories uh, and for leads on that. And we're inviting you as our community um, to present to us any leads or any stories that you might think are worth following up. Now, as we come to the end of uh, 2017, if that's how you consider today, I'd like to po uh, propose to you that you, you do the following meditation that, that had a deep impact on my life. When you've got time in a, in a quiet place, in a quiet space, take the time to write down for yourself um, an obituary. Write down the kind of obituary that you hope that the people that survive you will say about you on the day of your funeral. And don't hold back on, on what that would be. Write everything down that, that you would hope to do, that you would hope to achieve, and that you would hope to be. And the reason why I invite you to do that is for two things. 
Firstly, is it, it will reveal to yourself the orientation of your heart, whether your heart is directed towards God and the things of God, or whether it's directed away from God and the things of God. But as well as doing that, it will identify to yourself, assuming obviously that you've presented yourself with a godly path, the, the vocation of your life, the way that you can then live a life that has meaning. And then don't waste one day, don't waste any decision that isn't living the kind of life that you would want to have celebrated at life's end. And if you find that when you write down this kind of obituary that you have basically a litany of, of, of sinful habits and conduct, things that you look at and you think to yourself, okay, I'm not a hedonist, I believe in God, I believe in the day of judgment, but these are the things on my heart, then what it presents to you is the work that you have to do over the next year or two to transform your inner man, your inner self, into something better. Now, this tradition of reflecting upon our lives through the prism of death is deeply rooted within Christian spirituality. You find it in Christian art, you find it in Christian custom, you find it in Christian tradition. The idea of, for instance, monks keeping the skulls of their ancestors inside the monastery or artists portraying casual scenes of life in a state of decay and death. It's rooted in a, a Christian understanding that the finding the true value of all things or the, the relative value of all things is found in and as we reflect upon the finality of life, at life's end. Because when we think upon life's end, it's only then that we begin to see things in how we truly give them relative meaning. And also death, because it's so final and so absolute, gives us a way a reflection, a light to be cast that shows the absolute meaning of all things. And I would think that a life that is not lived in a way that seeks to be something that can be honoured at its end is a life wasted. I think it doesn't take much thinking to realise what things are of value when faced with death. But the practice of reflecting upon our life through the prism of death is something that in our modern culture has been abandoned and forgotten. In our modern culture, we are living lives that are constantly barraged by distraction, by entertainment, things that sensualize our senses, in a way that moves us away from any sense of deeper and prof more profound meaning. And our society is rotting from the inside out because of that fact, because it is a life lived in denial of the inevitability of death and the denial of the inevitability of judgment. And so I invite you to do this reflection and then from this day to the end of your life, give all your energy, all your time, all your resources, make every decision that you make connected to living that kind of life that you would want to be celebrated at life's end. Mm -hmm.